So now we know a little bit about memory and we know just a little bit about um, how this is related to references. But what I want to do is sort of, you know, again, try to like put this into your mind using a picture. Um, we talk a little bit about how Java uses references to determine when something is safe to delete. Um, as we pointed out, there is a way to create things that consume memory in Java, but there's actually no way to remove them from the system. Java will do this for you. And the way it does this is through a technique called reference counting. And again, this brings us back to references, which is our focus this week. Um, the way reference counting works is quite simple. It's under this principle that we've been kind of talking about in the past, which is if no reference exists to a particular thing, then it must not exist. Sorry, it might, sorry. If no reference exists to a particular thing, it might as well not exist. If there's a phone number in the world, that there's, if there's a phone in the world that has no phone number, nobody can call it. That phone might as well not exist. If there's a house in the woods that no one has an address to, that house might as well not exist. And what Java does to keep program memory under control is when an object reaches a point in the program where there are no references left to it, Java will remove that object from memory. This is sometimes also known as garbage collection, which I think is somewhat of a pejorative term because like, we're not saying that the object is garbage. It just isn't useful anymore. So let's see an example of how this works. I put together a little program uh, on the left. What that program does, you'll see there's, there's two pieces to it. So outside of the loop, it maintains a reference to a string. And then inside the loop, what it does is every time it goes through the loop, you'll see on the right side of this assignment, it creates a new string. So every single time I go through the loop, I'm creating a new string and that string is gonna take up some memory. And I save a reference to it in this local variable. So this is a variable that's declared inside the loop. The first time through the loop, I also make a copy of that reference into this uh, save reference outside the loop. And so the first time I come through the loop, this is how the, the world looks. So I've created a string and that string has uh, the character zero basically because I'm initializing it with I. And I have two references to that string. I have S, which is the reference that I use in the original assignment. But because this is the first time through the loop, I also have a copy of that reference in save. So at this point, I've got one object, two references. So at this point, this object is definitely not safe to remove because I actually have two references to it. But let's go on. Okay, so here's how things look after the second iteration of the loop where i is one. Now, the new string that I created with the value uh, one is saved in the reference s, but um, that uh, save now holds a reference to the string that I created the first time. Okay, so now I've created two strings and I have a reference to one of the strings in S. That's going to change every time I go through the loop. And I have the reference to the first string I created in save. Now let's think about what happens the third time I go through the loop. So save is still holding on to that first string that I created and it's always going to until the loop finishes. But now what's happened is I've overwritten my reference S again with a new string with contents two. What does that mean for the string with contents one? Well, at this point in the program, think about it. Would there be any way to refer to this string at this point, to that string at this point, the string that we created with value one? Well, no. The local variable S that's inside the loop now refers to a string with value two the string reference save that's outside the loop now refers to a string with value zero. So the second string I created, first time through the loop, I created a string with value zero, next time one, now two. So I've got a reference to the third string I created, I've got a reference to the first string I created, but that second string I created, nobody has a reference to it, okay? Um, and so as this goes on and on, and this loop keeps going and going and going, this is always going to be the state of the world. I will always have a reference to the first string I created because I've saved that reference outside the loop. But that local variable inside the loop gets overwritten every single time. And so it only holds a reference to the most recently created string. So save always holds a reference to the first string I created. S 
always holds a reference to the latest string I created. Any other strings that I created along the way, nobody has a reference to. And so what will happen periodically, and this is known as, again, garbage collection, Java will pause your program and it'll go through memory. It'll find everything that doesn't have a reference. So in this case, I've got two string objects that I created that are taking up space in memory, but that nobody has a reference to. And Java knows that because nobody has a reference to these objects, nobody can reference them. Nobody can do anything to them. Nobody can read them. Nobody can split them. Nobody can trim them. Nobody can do anything to these strings because nobody knows where they are. No one has their address. Nobody can call them. Nobody can visit them. They are, uh, well, again, I don't like to call them garbage, but they are not useful anymore. And so what Java will do is it'll take the memory that these strings are taking up and it will reclaim it and make it uh, available for other, other types of memory allocations, other uses. The program can reuse that memory to store a new object. Um, and this is the principle behind garbage collection. And, and again, it's all made possible by this idea of references because, because we use references in our program, Java knows what objects we can refer to and critically for garbage collection also knows which objects we can't refer to. Now this is by far the simplest possible example of this principle. So, so again, let's go through this. When we start off, we have two references to one object. Now as we go, every time we go through the loop, we create a new string. We save a reference to that string in S, which always saves a reference to the most recently created string. Save, on the other hand, only gets updated the first time through the loop, and so save always stores a reference to that first string we created with value zero. And as we keep going and going, what's happening is every time through the loop, we're letting go of one of the strings that we created before. Because those string objects have no references that refer to them, Java will eventually, at some point, it doesn't do this immediately. It usually waits for a little while because garbage collection pauses your program and can cause it to, to stall for a small period of time. So at some point, Java will pause your program, it'll go through memory, find all of the objects that don't have any references to them, and reclaim that space. Um, this is a technique that's in wide use. Java was one of the first mainstream languages to introduce this idea. Um, but since then, this is also used by Python, by JavaScript, by Go, by you know, lots and lots of other programming languages that you find out there in the world have a very similar idea. Um, at the same time, there's also some really exciting new approaches to memory management that I certainly don't have to talk, uh, time to talk about here. Um, but this idea of garbage collection through reference counting is something that is extremely common. And it's a very common way for languages to help programmers manage memory without uh, forcing them to think about having to clean up stuff. So, so if you think about this example, we never had to delete a string. We don't have to figure out, oh, I'm done with that string, I need to delete it. Java knows when we're done with something, because when we're done with something, we don't have any references left to it. And at that point, it's safe to remove. 